Well, hello. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Lorene. If you're new, thank you for visiting with me. And if you're coming back, hello, old friends. I'm going to talk to you today about A Vow So Bold and Deadly. It is Richard, uh, it is Richard. <laughs> it is written by Bridget Kemmerer. Kemmerer. And uh, this is the third book in a, tr a series, trilogy, and it begins with A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and the middle one is A Heart So Fierce and Broken. Now, I have managed to read all three in fairly short order, and I give them, I give them all like four and a half, fives, just sort of depended a little bit. I think the middle book was a little less of a five it was like a four and three quarters and this one is more of a four and a half and I think part of the reasons this one is a little less than the others is because um, it's that whole thing of uh, in a series where most of the dilemmas have been either solved or the reader can sort of see the trajectory that the solution is going so so it's a wrap-up book and I think that for me, that re slows the reading down in the sense that uh, there aren't generally too many more conflicts introduced into things, or there aren't any more um, new and exciting characters introduced unless the author has got a plan of, um, you know, like I'm going to start the next series. And for me, that's of no interest because I don't read series until they're completely done. So if a character comes in that starts to take the story away from a series, I, I kind of like pretend they're not there. Well, anyhow, what we've got here is a group of, of um, young people, uh, sort of between 17 and early 20s, I guess, because the royal prince is probably, you know, 21 or something like that. And in the first book, we have got Harper, who has cerebral palsy, and she lives in uh, Washington, D.C. And in the world where the prince lives, which is a sort of a fantasy fairyland kind of a thing, um, they have magic, and they do not in Washington, D.C. And he has been turned into the beast by, like, a really, really god-awful, uh, bad... Well, um, she's not... She's sort of a mage, or a mage-ishin, but, like, M-A-G-E-ishin. Um, so, she like, she is creepy. She is horrible. Uh, it, the whole series contains a fair amount of stabbing and blood and different body parts coming off so there's gore especially in the first one and uh, so she's turned the prince into the beast and so we've got the beauty and the beast thing so the beast has a bodyguard who can go back to uh, the other world Washington DC and get women young girls to go over to fall in love with the beast and every time that fails the whole curse reenacts itself and it's just very, it's a very interesting sort of reincarnation over and over again for the beast and who's the prince and the bodyguard because the evil person keeps coming in and making it just like a bigger shit show over and over and over again. So the bodyguard has gone across to Washington DC and has picked a girl. Harper wasn't the girl that was picked. She sees this guy trying to like mug or kidnap or something this other girl and she like leaps into the situation and ends up being the one who goes back to the beast situation and so we get this beauty and the beast kind of scenario and it's very clear in the first book but it's so much different than a lot of other retellings that I have gone through for one thing Harper has cerebral palsy for another she's no um shy wallflowers like yeah like let me get up and get out of this problem and she's a real problem solver she's very much an impulsive i'm going to solve what's right in front of me kind of a guy the prince is much more of a, stra a sta strategian strategian strategic kind of a fella and the bodyguard whose name is um gray I'm sorry, I just, I like, I had a blip there because I think he's got more than one gray, what, more than one name. Um, he has this bracelet on that allows him a certain amount of magic, and, but everybody just keeps reincarnating every time the bad person comes in. And Harper doesn't. She's still human and frail. So we've got the whole scenario being set up for the curse to be broken in the first book. 
and I will not tell you if it does or doesn't because maybe it doesn't. And then in the second book, we've got um, it more from the point of view of Gray, who has uh, been released from his bodyguard duties, <clears throat> but he has a secret uh, that the prince, well, he, he, he does, it's okay, Gray has a secret that he doesn't want the prince to know about. The prince has a problem that he doesn't realize Gray can solve. He thinks the, the solution is elsewhere in the kingdom, so he's searching for this other solution. On top of which, we have another country out there that wants to take over this country and they want the trade routes. So we've got this, this kind of war thing happening over there. And there's a queen who is like, oh, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> also a violent, like mad woman. She solves everything with a lop off his head. She's like the queen of hearts. And um, she has two daughters. And in order to become the next queen, you have to kill your mother. Or maybe you let her live and she names you the next heiress. Or, But actually anybody in the country can come up to the queen and stab her, kill her, and become the next queen. So there's always this kind of, you know, tension about, oh my God, am I going to be alive in the morning? So this country's ruler has tried to invade. And so there is a new prince, there's a new character in that family, Leah Mara, who is um, going to be sort of Gray's counterpart. And we see their two stories uh, shifting and coming together and drifting apart and so on. And we still see uh, Harper and the prince. So that's what's happening in the second book. And in the third book, we've got, you know, all four of them kind of twisting and everybody's got the wrong information. Everybody's got their own assumptions as to how things need to be solved. Uh, nobody's taking the path of peace. Everybody's going for blood, blood, blood. And you know, sooner or later, um, someone figures out this isn't working. We need another, we need another vision. And so, Taking that vision forward means that other power players are going to lose power. So, you know, you can imagine the suppression of, of um, one group happening and at the... Da-da-da-da. Uh, <laughs> That's the end. Da-da-da-da. <laughs> Come to the end of the book and you just go, that was actually pretty cool. It was a bit of a... Um, bit of a shit show, but I it kept my interest the whole way through. The characters were written well enough that I, I re remained in sympathy with all of them. And certainly about the midway point of the third book, um, as people were clearly not getting the right answer to the solution, I was a, a little bit like, oh my god, could we move away from the war and just try something else? Have you thought about a truce? Now, that's not the way they go, but still, <laughs> it's just like, try something else. So I really enjoyed it. I think this is a completely rock-solid series and um, written by Bridget Kimmermer and starts with A Curse So Dark and Lonely. They're all out and they were all at the library and I think you'll totally rock with this if you, I guess I should say that uh, it's fantasy, right? There's magic. <laughs> I love me a magic and I love me something that looks like a dragon. So I hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.